by Doctor of Physics, Mr. Roland Kane. Will you have a pint? I would love a pint. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> and Roland and the other boffins here at the Large Hadron Collider are up to something rather exciting because they're trying to blow up the universe. <laughs> Which, I have to say, Roland, to a layman like me, sounds like a terrible idea. So, what's all that about? That's not what we're trying to do. Right, so what went wrong? No, Donnie, we're, we're trying to recreate the conditions that existed um, the, the tiniest, tiniest fraction of a second after the Big Bang. So... Mm. <laughs> Bang! And actually, it is making a bit of a noise. Well, that may be why. And I, I must say, Roland, if, if that's a large Hadron Collider, I, I don't much fancy standing next to an enormous one. <laughs> and a lot of the work here is, of course, still carried out by hand. But now it's time for a hymn, and this week it comes with an apology to our regular correspondents, Phil and Meg McQueen of Sulky Abbott, which is, of course, in Sussex, and not, as I previously read out, bum sex. <laughs> Sorry about that. Red faces all round. And to make up for it, here's All I Want To Do, All I Want To Do, All I Want To Do is Praise Him. And do join us next week when A Prayer and a Pint is coming from the Mere Space Station in Collier's Wood. Cheers. All I want to do, all I want to do, all I want to do is praise him. All I want to do, all I want to do, all I want to do is praise him. What do I want to do? What do I want to do? What do I want to do? Praise him. Who do I want to praise? Who do I want to praise? Who do I want to praise? God. so scary as they're among us now. Any one of us could be one of them. The machines. I ain't no fracking machine. Frack those fracking machines. <laughs> Isn't that right, Colin? Does not compute. Does not compute. You're right there, Colin. John Gravy with that, love. Negative oil. Must eat oil. Oil, Colin? <laughs> Colin loves his oil. Oil. Let's hear it for the dreamers. The ones who think anything is possible. <laughs> this is for the thrill seekers. The excitement lovers who think you can never have too much fun. <laughs> the ones who live for today. And who think big, not small. Welcome to the lottery way of thinking. <laughs> Think lottery.
15 inch wireless slim top with a new tabby cat operating system. <laughs> Tidy. Slashing edge. So we're looking at what, 1800 with all the bells and wizards? 1800 and you get power carpet thrown in. Power carpet, naturally. Any upgrabs it might need are available from the in store wow down at. There's a Hartford lineless jacket, obviously. Eight times as thick as you'd get at home. Octo fat. Nice. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll, I'll take, take it. it. Where do I pay? No, no, I'm, I'm the customer. <laughs> I'm the customer, you're the shop assistant. I'm definitely the customer. But you've got the shirt. The, I'm just brand loyal. I don't work here. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we said I was the customer. No, I'm the customer because I'm standing on the customer side of the shopping table. Is this still the shop sketch? Yes, we, we agreed to make it modern. We shouldn't have done that. But we can't stay in the past. Shops have changed. Not in sketches. I told you. You need a bell and a wooden counter and a man wearing brown overalls who says, Hello, sir. Welcome to the computer shop. How can I help you today? Where do you go shopping? The last time anyone did that, this would have been the size of a bus. We can make the computer bigger. No. Th th this is what these shops are like now. It's just confusing. I mean, we could be anywhere. Are we in heaven? <laughs> We'd have harps. And to be strictly realistic, you wouldn't even be in a shop. You can pick one of those up for half the price online. Good call. Start again? It's probably for the best. Perfect. 16-inch slim top, tabby cat OS, four tetrabits of intelligence. Just go to checkout. Hello, sir. Welcome to the internet shop. How can I help you? I'd like to buy a computer, please. Thank you. So, Felicity, how'd it go? Uh, well, Ian, I went in there, um, put my heart and soul into it, really gave it my heart and soul, and at the end of the day, speaking from my heart and soul, that's really all I could have done. Is it, though? What? <laughs> Putting your heart and soul into it, is that really all you could have done? What about practising? Or learning the words? or trying to stay in tune. Aren't all those things quite important? Yeah, but what I'm saying is, Ian, I went in there today, put my heart and soul on the line, really gave it my heart and soul, and at the end of the day, coming right from my heart and soul now, there's really nothing else I could have done. <laughs> yeah, but technically, there is, though. What? Well, you know, you could have got up early and rehearsed. You could have dressed like a proper singer instead of getting trussed up in leather like some Tory MP two seconds before a fatal wanking accident. You could have picked a funky modern tune instead of that sort of depressing Mariah Carey thing that sounded like something a taxi driver would listen to whilst burning photo albums in a lay-by. Or you could have worked on your vocal technique, which, to be honest, was a bit hoarse and shouty. I don't mean to be rude, but you put me in mind of a dog trying to bark the alphabet. Is any of this helping? But I put my heart and soul into that performance. Yeah, but in the real world, that's not really good enough. Which, if you think about it, Felicity, is probably why you're still living with your gran and working in 